Fine Arts Center has an extraordinary collection of 197 Audubon engravings that were done between 1827 and 1838. Ever since I came on here, I've wanted to do something in terms of an exhibition with these prints and was looking for the right opportunity to get this work out in a new way. So I kept looking for contemporary artists who could pull some threads from Audubon who were dealing with similar ideas, similar kinds of imagery, and I ended up going with a regional artist, Kevin Sloan, who I met two years ago in 2013, and we started a conversation about the show uh, because I had seen in his work a few examples in which he had used birds directly from Audubon prints. So he had looked at Audubon and painted the birds as Audubon did back in the early 1800s, except he changed things dramatically in terms of the context. He really made these birds contemporary in terms of the objects they're interacting with, in terms of the backgrounds, and yet there are historical references throughout. Audubon's been a source of inspiration uh, for about eight years, and I've been working pretty extensively with his images in various ways. I'll um, take an image of his work, transform it into my work, but in a bigger picture, I like to think of myself as someone bringing the idea of naturalist art into the 21st century. So in other words, I like referring to the natural world, honoring it, but also acknowledging that we live in a 21st century technology-driven society, and I don't edit those things out. So maybe perhaps like Audubon, um, I paint the world I see around me in its entirety. That's where we come to the title of the show a naturalist and an artist. That title is drawn from a quote by Audubon in one of his journals in which he referred to himself as a naturalist and an artist. In this context, with this show, with one gallery dedicated solely to Audubon and one gallery solely dedicated to Kevin, what I wanted this title to do is raise a question. Is there one who is the naturalist and the other who is the artist? Or are they both both? And if that's the case, then how? And I think as you walk around the galleries and look at the individual works, you'll find clues that send you in that direction. This piece is a direct uh, connection to a piece in the exhibit of Audubon's work, which is a depiction of the passenger pigeon. In my depiction, I wanted to honor the passenger pigeon and more specifically, the last surviving passenger pigeon, Martha. She was found dead in the bottom of her um, room at the Cincinnati Zoo, September 1st, 1914. The centenary of that event was last September. So I made a painting specifically about that moment in time. It was important to me to honor that as well as honor Audubon's work. However, in my depiction, while I've tried to remain true to Audubon, his depiction included two birds. The bird above is almost like a memento, nothing um, alive there to help sustain Martha, who we see below, but rather it's almost like a memento, a, a, a memorabilia, some kind of a thing you could purchase at a gift shop maybe. It's a little sad, it's poignant, it's an important part of American history, and it's an important part of the history of conservation and species um, extinction. Uh, this is an ongoing story and I wanted to commemorate it in this piece here. Audubon wanted us to really look at these birds, many of which were relatively new discoveries or completely new discoveries. You know, he came west pretty soon after the Louisiana Purchase Act, just after the United States had almost doubled in size. And so he is one of the first people coming west and really looking at these birds in an analytical way. But one thing to understand about Audubon is that he wasn't a scientist. Audubon basically built his career and his reputation on field experience, observing these birds in nature. He didn't have an academic background in either science, ornithology, or art. Kevin has a, an art background. He has an academic background in terms of uh, coming up through the process of learning how to paint in, in 
uh, interesting ways, learning how to paint in ways that really articulate his skills, and bringing in a very contemporary kind of feel. You know, we look at Kevin's works, and in many of them, not only are there contemporary objects throughout, like the orange extension cords that we all have out in our front yard, right? Uh, but bringing those objects into a kind of narrative in combination with the birds that feels very contemporary, even has an environmental narrative to it.